Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we are going to look at how to change fractions to decimals. And there's basically two ways you can do this. The first way is that sometimes we can use equivalent fractions and we can then get the denominator of the fraction, the new fraction, to be 10 or 100 or 1000 or whatever. And from that then we can easily write a decimal. And the other more common case is that we need to use division. I said long division here, but you could also use a calculator to divide. Let's look at some examples. Two fifths is an easy fraction to change into a decimal. We can use method number one, because I can easily write it, write an equivalent fraction that has a denominator 10. Five times two, two times two, right? Four tenths. And so this as a decimal is of course four tenths. 0 0.4, because here are tenths, here's tenths place, 4 tenths. Oh, this one, I can write it easily with a denominator 100. 25 times 4, so 7 times 4. We get 28 hundredths. And then that is as a decimal 28 hundredths, right? You know, here. Oh, 0 0.28, 28 hundredths. Now, this method actually only works when your denominator here, its prime factorization only has twos and fives. But most students don't need to know that. And for most fractions, we need to use division. And the division method works for these fractions too, okay? So this method always works. If we want to have 11 sixteenths as a decimal, we use long division or a calculator and we divide. 11 divided by 16. And there's two cases here in this method 2. The first case is the decimal ends and the second case is that the decimal does not end. So let's look at both. First I'm going to divide. 11 divided by 16. And 16 doesn't go to 11 any time, so I have to put 0 for starters. And then my decimal point here. And decimal 0, so I can divide. Okay, I don't know yet how many decimal zeros I'll even need. And now 16, how many times does it go to 110? To help me with this division, I wrote beforehand the multiplication table of 16 here on the side. 16, 32, 48, etc. So 110 over here, 6 times. 6 times 16 is 96. And then 110 minus 96 is 14. And drop this 0, 140. Okay, that would be 8 times. 8 times 16, 128. Subtract and 12. And drop another 0, 120. 7 times. And 7 times 16 is 112. And subtract 8. Drop another 0, 5 times. And now it is even, okay? 5 times 16, 80. And no more division to do. So this division went evenly in that sense. And our decimal ends right there. 11 sixteenths equals exactly 0 0.6875. And of course, your problem might ask you to round this to certain accuracy. But anyway, now let's look at the other possibility where the decimal does not end. And that is always a kind of a surprise to students when they encounter a decimal number that does not end. But let's see. Here I have 7 elevenths. So I divide 7 divided by 11. 11 doesn't go to 7 any times. 0 here, and then I have to put some decimal zeros here. Don't know how many, but anyway, 70. Okay, 11 goes to 76 times, 6 times 11, 66. Subtract, and we get 4. I drop down 0, 40. 11 goes to 43 times, 3 times 11, 33. Subtract, and 7, and then 0, 70. Okay. Now it goes to 76 times, 6 times 11, 66. Subtract 4, and then 40. Goes to 43 times, 3 times 11, 33. Subtract, and 7, and then another 0. Now I notice here pretty soon that my remainders here keep repeating. I keep getting the 7 and the 4, 7 and the 4, you know? And so my these numbers here keep being the same. Now it would be 6 again, 6 times 11, 66, subtract, you know? So, there's a definite pattern here, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, and it never ends. It's very easy to see when you start dividing, 
that this process will never end, but will keep repeating the same remainders over and over. So we can mark this as three dots like that, show that it does not end. Or there's another kind of notation. You take the path that actually repeats and put a line over it. So six and three will keep repeating over and over and over. Okay? Or your problem might ask you to round it to three decimals or two decimals, which you can do that too. Another example is two fifteenths. Let's see what happens here. Fifteen goes to two zero times. Okay, let's put decimal zeros here. And to twenty it goes once. One times one times fifteen. And then subtract five and zero. Fifty. Three times it goes three times to fifty. Forty-five and subtract and get five and zero. Okay, it goes three times. Again, three times fifteen. 45, subtract 5, drop a 0, 50, <laughs> three times. Okay, I already see that it's going to repeat this 50, 45, 50, 45. You know, it's never going to get anywhere. So my threes are going to repeat here. This time, when I write it, I only put the line over the three, because it's only the three that's going to repeat, not the one, right? The one is here, and the threes will keep repeating. Now, there are some fractions that make kind of a neat pattern for students to explore this concept of repeating decimals. And I wrote them here. Let's look at real quick if I can solve some of them, divide some of them. You know, one ninth, two ninths, and so on. And then these elevenths, they make a nice pattern. You might want to try it out if I don't get fully done. One divided by nine over here, let's see. One divided by nine. Okay, 9 goes to 1, 0 times. 9 goes to 10, 1 time. 1 times 9, 9. Subtract, 1. Then drop a 0, 10. It goes once there. 1 times 9, 9. Subtract, 1, 0. Oh, okay, it's going to repeat the ones. See? 0 0.1111111. Okay. And how about 2 divided by 9? Let's see. Nine goes to zero, I mean two, zero times. Nine goes to twenty, two times, two times nine, eighteen. Subtract, get two, and drop a zero. Twenty again, so two times again, eighteen here, and two again. Oh, it's going to repeat the twos. This is basically zero point two repeating, so I put a line over it. You might already guess what is going to be here, and here, and here, and down the line. I leave this pattern for you to discover, okay? One more little thing. As we can see, sometimes you have a fraction and the decimal ends. Sometimes you have a fraction, and I said here, the decimal is unending and repeating. It's always going to have a repeating pattern. Now you might want to ask, are there any decimals that are unending and without a pattern? How do we know that there's always going to be a pattern in, in these unending decimals? The answer is that actually there exist decimal numbers that don't have any repeating pattern. Those do exist. They are unending, there's never any pattern to them, but they are not rational numbers. They are not fractions. Okay? They are what we call irrational numbers. And that is another topic in itself and very fascinating at that. So, if it is a fraction, then its decimal expansion will always either end, or if it doesn't end, it's repeating. And if you happen to find a decimal that is unending and non-repeating, then it's not a fraction, it's an irrational number, such as pi, for example, is one such number.